Hello, I'm Marites Vitug, and this is Worldview, where we take a look at global, regional, and national affairs in conversations with officials, newsmakers, and analysts. Joining us from Japan is Saya Kiba, an associate professor at the Kobe City University of Foreign Studies. Saya has been closely following defense ties between Manila and Tokyo, as well as security issues between Japan and the rest of Southeast Asia. Saya, welcome to Worldview. Thank you for making time. Thank you very much for inviting us. So, Saya, let's start with the big issue. What's really new about Japan's new security strategy, which was unveiled late last year? Okay, so the new national security strategy, which was approved by the Japanese cabinet in December last year, uh, addressed the emerging challenges to international order and new security threats such as cyber attack, disinformation, uh, and hybrid warfare or climate change. And so the goal of Japan's defense policy is to secure the stable international order. So please make sure, of course, Japan will never try to fight to the others. We need flexible capacity to hinder any attempt of the coercion from any country. So the document says that the Indo-Pacific region is getting the center of gravity of global power. And therefore, the strategy says Japan will build a multi-layer network among its ally and like-minded countries in the region. For example, um, Japan will enhance defense dialogue, trainings and exercises, bilateral agreement, such as reciprocal access agreement or RAA, or transfer of defense equipment and technology, or extend capacity building support. And then I believe that Southeast Asian countries, the particularly the Philippines, is the core of our like-minded countries to, to make such an effort together. So why is the Philippines, uh, is it special or is it the most important uh, like-minded country in Southeast Asia? Well, the national security strategy does not mention any particular definition of the name any other countries, which what, what is what which countries really the, the like-minded countries. But they say that they emphasize the ASEAN. And uh, Saya, um, China is an overriding, mm -hmm. it's a big factor in this new security strategy, but it's never mentioned in the documents, right? Uh, no, no, the, the, some threats are actually mentioned, but uh, what I mean is that the, the, like, the, 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 the description of like-minded countries is still very vague. So not only the allies, our only ally, the United Nations, uh, United States, but also the, we have to enhance the security cooperation with European countries, India, and other emerging countries, and like-minded countries. So that's what they say. Yes, but China is not mentioned as a, as a threat. It doesn't say that China is a threat to stability in the Indo-Pacific region. Well, no, not the, the country itself, but it's it, uh, like, like a coercive, you know, a change of status quo by force is really the threat. That's, that's the, the, what the, the document says. You know, Asaya, what's fascinating here is that for mm -hmm. the first time, mm -hmm. Japanese fighter jets, two Japanese fighter jets landed in Clark last year. This is the first yes. time that this happened since World War II. And there are exactly. other, yeah, there are many other firsts. As you know, our Philippine mm -hmm. Army joined exercises with the Japanese Ground Self Defense Force and the U.S. Army. And then for the first time, our Defense Secretary and Foreign Affairs Secretary during Duterte's time met with their counterparts in Japan. And now the Philippines is one of the first countries to receive official security assistance. So, why is the Philippines? considered um, why is this happening now with Japan? Mm -hmm. why, why are we number one in this regard? Well, the, the change, well, the, 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 the defense cooperation between the two countries have gradually, gradually emerged in the past eight years. It's not mm -hmm. all of a sudden. It's not because of the Taiwan contingency uh, problems. Uh, there has been many defense cooperation programs between Japan and the Philippines, and then our defense attache in Japan embassy in Manila was actually playing the crucial role. 
Well, what was the most significant between Japan and the Philippines was the Japan's relief operation after the Typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda in 2013. At that time, Japan sent relief team, including JICA experts, but not only JICA, like 1,000 plus J Japan Self-Defense mm -hmm. Forces members landed in the Philippines for relief goods transportation, medical assistance, vaccination, and epidemic control. So it was 2013. And two years after, in 2015, when President Noinoi Aquino III paid state visit to Japan, the President Aquino and Prime Minister Abe signed a document called Action Plan for Strengthening mm -hmm. of the Strategic Partnership. And that action plan says both government recalling the contribution of Japan's self-defense forces in humanitarian assistance and disaster relief activities for Typhoon Yolanda in 2013, the both government will undertake a study on possible ways to determine the legal status of Japan's self-defense forces in disaster relief operation in the Philippines. So it was already mentioned. Mm. It means that two governments have already discussed to conclude some bilateral agreement and expand the bilateral defense cooperation in 2015. So I would like to emphasize that such idea of the Philippine-Japan uh, VFA visiting force agreement of the reciprocal access agreement, uh, that, that kind of discussion was not emerged mm. for future Taiwan contingency. The idea started just after Typhoon Yolanda and the main purpose of such agreement or exchange or cooperation is to support Japan self-defense forces oper operation in the Philippines for humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, or peacetime exchange, friendship mm -hmm. visit, capacity building, interoperability, those kind of things. So during the time of President Noinoi Aquino, we were not, mm -hmm. Japan and the Philippines were not able to agree to seal an agreement, a VFA or an RAA. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's happening now and what is the obstacle, if ever, from the Japan side or what are the reservations or views on an RAA or VFA with the Philippines? Well, still, um, well, the, the biggest obstacle is, of course, it's, it's the, 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 the Taiwan crisis is too much emphasized, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that. Uh, the momentum in 2015 was much more on humanitarian assistance and disaster relief emphasize. So, so the, nobody really questioned about that. But now, you know, considering the upgraded uh, cooperation between the U.S. and the Philippines, mm -hmm. and an emerging trilateral bi bi trilateral dialogue between the Philippines, U.S., Japan, so considering all those those kind of in background, some people may doubt the, the mm -hmm. this kind of you know the visiting force agreement, possible agreement between the Philippines and Japan can be. Uh, utilize for some uh, more aggressive purposes. But I don't think that uh, it, it, it happens, you know. Within our legal framework of Japan, it never happens. It's more for the, you know, um, peace and stability and the friendship or, or the friendship making and, and defense cooperation or capacity building for the future, you know, bilateral, so, bilateral uh, cooperation. Yeah. Because here in the Philippines, we mm -hmm. we're talking about a visiting forces agreement with Japan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in Japan, you're talking of a reciprocal access agreement. So mm -hmm. is there any difference between this RAA and VFA? I'm not very familiar with the, the legal differences mm -hmm. between the two agreements. But it's, it's just a name, matter of the name and, and the, the content is more important so so whatever you call whatever you call like visiting force <laughs> agreement or status of force agreement or raa it's almost the same what is important is that you know if the two countries conclude such an agreement in future and japan may join more exercises mm -hmm. in larger scale of forces to the philippines in the philippines and many joint future you know possible exercises such as for the ocean isr intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance uh, the japan has already been uh, participating the barikatan kamandag mm -hmm. or pacific partnership but only as observers right 
Yeah, Barika Tan and Kamadag is only um, for us and observers. Yeah. So only when we have a VFA or RAA can the, Jap mm -hmm. the Japan Self-Defense Forces really be part full-fledged participants? Yeah, without any fear. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, there are so many... Without any fear of what? Mm -hmm. uh, no, there's just a legal protection. For example, mm. something happens during the, the exercises, or if the during the, the disaster relief operations, if the self defense forces are caught by the accidents or the mm. the the second second disaster, then, then they have no status of, of force so far, right? So they are not diplomats; they are just on ordinary citizens. So the legal protection of our forces is really important to continue the the exercises and our actual operation in the other countries. Saya, within this year, it has been reported that the Philippines will receive warning and control radar systems, Japan's first export of defense equipment ever. Mm -hmm. And um, would ha, ha, are there other countries in Southeast Asia that have made the same uh, arrangement or have bought the same equipment or similar equipment from Japan? I mean, why are we the first? <laughs> well, uh, known. So there are ongoing dialogue. What kind of items should be transferred to the to Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia? We have already concluded a kind of you know a transfer of defense equipment agreement. But the Philippines is the only recipient of Japan's defense equipment so far, and probably Japan is still you know we are very new in this area of defense equipment transfer and then we need more expertise in marketing i guess <laughs> but in case of the philippines we have already started in 2016 so the the philippine navy has received five tc90 aircraft from japan during the delta administration in 2020 the philippine government decided to buy our mitsubishi electric air surveillance radar mm. But this is the first export of defense yes. equipment from Japan. That's okay. right. That's right. The air surveillance radar. So again, so wh why the Philippines is the first case? It it all you know, it really depends on you know the, the matchmaking of the needs and demand. Right. So in in the case of the Philippines, since 2016, uh, we could already much make the you know, our defense equipment and then the Philippine Navy side, Philippine Air Force side. Yes. And Saya, uh, you have been doing a survey with, uh, I think, in the Philippines and Indonesia? Mm -hmm. or, or is there another country in Southeast Asia? About the perception of these countries uh, towards Japan and its new security strategy. What have you found out? Is there a fear of Japan's militarism or de uh, departing from pacifist um, constitution? Well, no, no, not at all. Well, I conducted the elite interview to the policy elites, and, and then we also conducted media contents analysis, Philippine Star and New Inquirer, and some two other Indonesian newspaper, and the public opinion poll in Indonesia and the Philippines with the uh, with a local counterpart in the past two years. And it is all about the citizens' perception to Japan's foreign and security policies. And our finding is that the both policy elites and ordinary citizens in both countries are really not afraid of Japan's remilitarization. So they observe Japan's recent move as an opportunity rather than threat. We already asked, you know, the uh, included the question regarding our recent national security strategy, but we do not observe any fear. Mm -hmm. So I believe that they understand that Japan is enhancing defense cooperation to Southeast Asia for peace and stability and capacity building, not, not to escalate any arms race or coercive compen compensation in, in the region. And uh, you were talking earlier about the Taiwan Strait scenario. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, mm -hmm. but I think if the Philippines and Japan agree on an, a VFA or an RAA, will mm -hmm. the Japanese forces also have access to the EDCA, EDCA sites, the sites w determined by the Philippines and the U.S.? Will the Japanese mm -hmm. be able to mm -hmm. uh, have access to these sites as well? 
Yes, literally speaking, that, that's right. And as you mentioned, uh, the Japanese government have recently announced a new program of OSA, the Official Security mm -hmm. Assistance. Okay, it's not ODA, Official Development yes. Assistance and Official Security Assistance. And Official Security Assistance, well, you know, for is to for for the military infrastructure such as airport and telecommunication mm -hmm. ports. So, so uh, it is possible, you know, it, it is possible that in future that kind of scheme, such as OSA, is utilized for the the EDCA sites in cooperation with the Philippines and of, of course the coordination with the United States. But it's still the possibility. It is quite mm -hmm. new, and then the OSA budget is still uh, two billion yen per year as of now. So. Uh, I, th I think in future, in five years or in ten years, it is possible that the Japan, uh, Philippines, and the the, the 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 U.S. the trilateral cooperation can be realized in the EDCA sites. Yes, and also recently, uh, mm -hmm. again, a first happened that there was a meeting of the three national security advisors: That's U.S., right. yes. Japan, mm -hmm. the Philippines. Mm -hmm. What's your your take on this? I mean, um, this is the first time it happened. What is the impact of this on? Maybe Southeast uh, Asia or peace in uh, stability in the Indo-Pacific hmm. region. Well, that's very important because you know if, if the it is not the really pure military dialogue, but it is a national security council dialogue. It also includes the civilian agencies such as uh, the Philippine Coast Guard or the capacity building of the civilian agencies. Uh, so it, it is quite important to 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 meet with the Security Council people in higher level. Actually, in 2015, the 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 as I already mentioned, the the President Aquino and Prime Minister Abe agreed action plan, mm -hmm. and that action plan already announced that the two countries will conduct defense dialogue between foreign mm -hmm. and defense ministry ministers, defense authorities dialogue, and also dialogue between Japan's National Security Secretariat and Philippines National Security Council or NSC. Mm -hmm. So. It has already an idea in 2015, and it is great that the, the trilateral cooperation and trilateral dialogue is happening among the security National Security Council. So they have been gradually those you know the promise in 2015 has been gradually realized in the past eight years, and it's slowly, mm -hmm. silently, but steadily. I, I I I'm happy to to see such a you know the move of the enhanced dialogue or cooperation and. The mutual trust. Yes, uh, maybe one of the last two questions mm -hmm. I'll ask you is that so it started during the time of President Aquino, but apparently it lost momentum. Would you know wh why we lost momentum? Because in Typhoon Haiyan was a very big push, and then mm -hmm. suddenly um, mm -hmm. the first um, two plus two meeting, the Defense Secretary and Foreign Affairs Secretary, took place only in 2022, April, yes. I think. Yes. So yes. In why the end of the third What happened? Yeah. yeah. What happened in between? Well, they were. <laughs> I guess you know. I, I guess. Was it Duterte? Uh, <laughs> they were. You just waiting and seeing. You know, wait and mm. see the moment because you know when you when we recall the 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 first few years of the Delta administration, the even the the VFA between the Philippines and the, the United States mm. was not very stable. So I think it was not really a good time to 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 move forward between the Japan and the Philippines without the United States. Mm -hmm. So maybe mm -hmm. the last question. I know, Saya, that you've been involved in the ways to commemorate or to remember the 50th year of Japan ASEAN cooperation, which is this year, 2023. Mm -hmm. So. Is there a particular security angle in this 50th year of uh, the golden anniversary of Japan ASEAN relations? Is there yes. a particular security angle that Japan wants to highlight, or is it more varied in terms of issues? Uh, uh, just like uh, ASEAN's three pillars, we also have the three pillars, the political security, economic, mm -hmm. and people-to-people uh, -people connectivity. So in three pillars, uh, Japan would like to enhance the, the cooperation with ASEAN uh, and Southeast Asian countries. Uh, 
not, not really not, not the particular project for the security is mentioned but what we have to do is to look for look for a new project or the new programs with Southeast Asian counterpart you know mm -hmm. the Japan has been leading uh, Japan has Japan has been learning from Southeast Asian partners for the past 50 years you know 50 mm -hmm. years ago our country was not really loved by <laughs> our partners so some Filipino policy elites at the time was very critical to Japan's ODA the official development assistance even though we are not militarized but the Japan's ODA at the time time was tied with the Japanese companies right Japanese enterprises mm -hmm. and Japan's initial ODA was less sensitive to local socioeconomic issues such as environmental destruction, forced eviction, the demolition of people or human rights mm -hmm. of the local workers. So our counterparts in Southeast Asia, the Philippines, Indonesia, they were very keen observers and witness of Japan's change in the past 50 years. And I really appreciate that they are the constructive critique. Okay. So since then, the Japan tried to you know, uh, look for uh, the way how to be an equal partner to Southeast Asian countries through so-called heart-to-heart relations. And Japan has built a civilian center and civilian-led cooperation mechanism so far because of our constitutional restrictions. So most of the our effort to Southeast Asia was led by civilians. For instance, in the Philippines, Japan has developed a unique approach to supporting effort for peace and peace and stability in Mindanao, right? But in Mindanao, mm -hmm. all effort has been realized without the deployment of our soldiers, the de deployment of our self-defense forces. It was done by the civilian effort. So in ter even in terms of security cooperation, which is our topic today, mm -hmm. uh, I believe that there remains much room for Japan to develop more flexible and inclusive cooperation based on shared value with Southeast Asian uh, partners in this challenging you know, global security environment. And I hope that they can keep being our critical observer and witness of Japan's new move. So there is no package mm -hmm. right now. You know, all the programs, all the policies, all the cooperation packages will be uh, built up with be, or between Japan and Southeast Asian countries or among Japan and ASEAN. Will there be, I'm sorry, I just had to follow up. Will there be a specific, um, event that will commemorate this fifth golden anniversary uh, in, yes, in each, yes, in each country or will it be in, in can you tell us about it well, all together in december this year prime minister of japan will invite all asean mm -hmm. uh, leaders to tokyo and then they will have a special summit japan asean summit uh, it is already notified by to to the, the each country each member state of asean and then so they they promise to come mm -hmm. So, and there are also some side events uh, operated by the, the think tanks or Japan foundations and other agencies. So in December in Tokyo, it will be a, a Japan ASEAN summit, right? Yes, yes. And definitely they will come up with some statement for the commemorative uh, project <laughs> or the, yeah, some messages. Yeah, but anyway, just to, rem of course, you know this, Saya, but the surveys in the Philippines show that Japan is one of the most trusted countries. Uh, what a generational change, you know, uh, compared to our parents or grandparents who really right. have bad memories of Japan. And this is the same in, in other parts of Southeast Asia, right? As your yes, survey uh, shows. That, yeah, that, that's uh, what we also observe. So on that positive note, Saya, maraming salamat. I know that you speak uh, Filipino, that you were based here before. You work with the Japanese embassy here in Manila. Mm -hmm. Maraming salamat. Thank you for making time for this interview. And to our listeners and viewers, this has been Worldview with Marites Vitug. Thank you for watching. Thank you.